Football is possibly the closest humanity has got to having a global religion. People routinely follow their team all over the country or continent, singing songs and declaring heresy to those who don't follow their team. There's many similarities between the two. Whilst religion was spread through many forms, the main way was through the use of missionaries, and in a similar way, the same thing happened with football. As the game grew in popularity in Britain, those working in the shipping industry or who had simply moved abroad to start a new life would take the game with them. They would start playing either with other like-minded migrants or spread the game to locals, leading to the formation of football clubs in these communities. Scotland, as part of the British Empire, had a major part to play in this early spread of the game, so in this video we'll be looking at some notable, historically important clubs and even an entire football federation that were at least majorly influenced in their start by those who call Scotland their home. Arsenal, England Considering we share a border, it's no surprise that there is a strong Anglo-Scottish connection when it comes to the early days of football. Many clubs such as Sunderland, Preston Norved and Liverpool had a large Scottish contingent within their ranks, but a major club founded by a Scotsman was Arsenal. Dial Square was founded in 1886 by workers from a munitions factory, led by David Danskin, who purchased the first football for the club. David Danskin was born in Burt Island and would play amateur football for Collie Wanderers before moving down to London. The club wouldn't be called Dial Square for long, as not long after their first game, they would rename themselves to Royal Arsenal, after the location of their factory. In 1893, they would change the name again to become Woolwich Arsenal, as they had joined the Football League and turned professional that year, distancing themselves from being a works team. 1913 saw another name change, with the Woolwich being dropped due to their departure to the new ground of Highbury in Islington, North London. Arsenal have since become one of England's most successful clubs, with 13 top flight titles, 14 FA Cups, 2 League Cups, 17 Community Shields, a Cup Winners Cup and an Intercities Fair Cup to their name, and under the management of former player Mikel Arteta, they are back fighting at the top of the league with Manchester City and Liverpool. Sevilla, Spain Spain's oldest dedicated football club and Europa League merchant Sevilla are next on our list. Seville had a large British influence due to its large industrial expansion and being a major hub for trading in the south of Spain. The club was founded by a mixture of Spanish locals and British workers, a lot of them being Scottish. The club was founded during a Burns Night celebration where a mixture of Scots, English and Spanish men came together to found Club de Football de Sevilla with the founding document being published in the Dundee Courier. The club's first president was Edwin Johnston, who hailed from Elgin, and Hugh McCall from Glasgow would be the club's first captain. Sevilla have since been a moderately successful side domestically, with a single La Liga title in 1945-46, accompanied by five Copa del Rey wins. But they have an exceptional record in Europe, with seven Europa League titles, more than double the next most successful clubs in the competition. The club also have a UEFA Super Cup to their name, and are also the only winners of the UEFA CONMEBOL Club Challenge Cup, a competition set up between the winners of the Europa League and the CONMEBOL Sudamericana, South America's equivalent to the Europa League. Urgrete Idrotsalskap, Sweden Urgrete Idrotsalskap, or Urgrete for short, are Sweden's equivalent to Queen's Park. They are the oldest football club in Sweden, having had football introduced to them after Ayrshire's side New Mounds visited in 1891. The club would go on to play Sweden's first football game in 1892 against Idrotsalskapt Likans Soldata. Like Queen's Park, Örgreta were dominant in the early years of Swedish football, with 11 championships between 1896 and 1913. They were the top dogs in Sweden. Unfortunately for them, as time progressed, local rivals IFK Göteborg would become the big side in the city, along with the rise of clubs such as Marmar, AIK, Norrköping and Jürgens. They wouldn't be declared champions of Sweden again until 1985, and whilst they have won some lower league trophies here and there, they have spent most of their time bouncing between the top three divisions of Swedish football, last playing in the top flight in 2009. 
If any Swedes watching this video are greatly offended by my pronunciation, I am very sorry. Argentina. Down to sunny South America next, and this time we're focusing on how one man would give Argentina its introduction to football. Alexander Watson Hutton came from Glasgow, but would move to Buenos Aires to work as a teacher in 1882. Part of his teaching beliefs involved allowing students to play sports, and one of these sports was football, and he started this work at St Andrew's Scots School, a school set up for the Scottish immigrant community. In 1891, Alec Lamont would go on to found the Argentine Association Football League with St Andrew's Scots School, and this would be recognised as Argentina's first football league, even though it lasted a season and featured five clubs. In 1893, however, Hutton, along with representatives from six clubs, would reform a league, and with it, the Argentine Football Association. The school that Hutton was working at during this time was the Buenos Aires English High School, and due to rules meeting teams had to be separate entities from schools, they would found Alumni Athletic Club. Alumni would go on to win 10 top flight titles and 5 national cups, along with 7 cup wins in tournaments between Argentine and Uruguayan teams, but would ultimately fold in 1913. Hutton would pass away in Buenos Aires on the 9th of March 1936, and is buried in the Cementerio Britannico in the city. The main library at the Argentine FA is also named in honour of their founder. Argentina are one of the most successful nations when it comes to football, with 3 World Cup wins and 15 Copa America titles to their name, along with having some of the most passionate fans in the world. All of it is due to Hutton spreading the game during his time in the country. Bangu AC, Brazil. To the beaches of Brazil next for our final club in this video, and that club is Bangu AC. Now, Bangu aren't exactly powerhouses in Brazil, and not even in the city of Rio de Janeiro, but they have an important role to play in the history of football. Bangu can trace its roots to the Fabrica Bangu, which employed many Brits that had emigrated to the area, and one of them was Thomas Donahoe. Donahoe moved to Rio from Redfisher to work as a foreman in the factory, and with other Brits coming over to work there, he set up a football team, and in the first meeting was elected as vice president. Brazilian football in its early days was reserved for the upper classes, however, so a factory was something different for the country, helping to break barriers for those wishing to play. Another barrier would be broken when Francisco Canacal would join the club, becoming the first black Brazilian footballer, and for this, in 2001, the Rio de Janeiro state government would award the club the Tiradentes Medal for fearlessness and pioneering spirit in the fight to overcome discriminatory prejudices against athletes. Whilst Bangu would be leaders off the pitch, they were far from it on the pitch. A highest National League finish of second in 1985 is as good as it got on a national level. Despite having a few state trophies here and there, they are currently playing in the Campeonato Brasileiro Serie D, the fourth tier of Brazilian football. That's it for this video then. Of course, there are plenty of other clubs that could feature, but these were the ones that I found most interesting. I hope that you learned something new with this video. If you are a supporter of the clubs mentioned, did you know about these connections beforehand? Of course, the usual requests of liking and subscribing are appreciated. Have notifications on to make sure you don't miss a video. Oh, don't. This is a democracy. You're allowed to choose what to do. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.